And it comes down to asking empowering questions. The universe responds to the questions that you ask. And oftentimes, individuals ask disempowering questions. They will ask, why me, oh Lord? Why me? Who's to blame? What's wrong? So we have to ask some empowering questions, and here's why. Every problem that you have in life is a question that's trying to ask itself. And every question is an answer trying to reveal itself. And every answer is an action trying to express itself. And every action is a way of life trying to be born. Let me break that down for you again. A problem in your life stands for emblem. It really means emblem. It's emblematic of a set of beliefs, perceptions, and points of view that we're holding on to. So it outpictures as a problem. It's really an emblem of issues within our own awareness, conditions that are preventing the expression of our good. It's inviting us to ask a question. For every problem, there's a question trying to be asked. For every answer, there's an action trying to be expressed. And for every action, there is a way of life trying to be born. So the universe is inviting you to ask a question. Matter of fact, it's daring you to ask a question, to ask a proper question, because if you do, your life will change. And the comfort zones that you are living in and the coping mechanisms that you have become used to, they will shatter. They will fall apart. It will be a little uncomfortable. Some people have become used to, to lack and limitation. They're used to, to, to dis-ease and disharmony. They're used to it. And they develop the whole way of life to maintain that particular way of being. But if you begin to ask the right question, the answers will come. The actions will come. The way of life will be born. And you will not know yourself anymore. You won't be able to remember who that person was. And in that space, you begin to understand the law that you only get to keep what you give away. And that as you are allowing the love, the peace, the joy, the wisdom, and the harmony to ex express through you, as you allow your vision state to speak itself into expression, the world rolls up at your feet and becomes whatever is necessary for the next step of your evolution. And you will grow from lack and limitation to abundance and health and prosperity. And you'll begin to discover that all of it is right here and right now. It is not in the past. It is not in the future. Ricky Beebe and I were in New York City. We were at the United Nations. And I had an opportunity to speak at a special forum there. And after the speaking, we had to catch a plane because we had an, an engagement the next day. And so I, as we were coming out of the United Nations and we were getting into this van to take us to the airport, I became aware that I had left my mobile phone inside the assembly hall. And I said, Ricky, I got to go back. And she says, no, we might miss our plane. I said, no, I, got, I need my phone. I got all the information. I got all my phone numbers. I need it. And she said, okay. So I go through security, and I'm running down the hallway. And when the security guards see me, I walk. Really cool. And then I get to the assembly hall, and I open the door, and there's another assembly already in there. And so I walk in like I belong there. Just kind of nod at people. Hey, how you doing? And there's a woman up there speaking. And I know my phone is right behind her. I got to catch a plane. And then she says something profound. And everybody's clapping. And in that break of energy, I go up on stage. I get the phone. And I go out. And I run down the hallway again. I stop when I see security. I get into the van. And we say, OK, on to JFK Airport. We get about a mile away from JFK, and I look at the itinerary. We're supposed to be at LaGuardia Airport. <laughs> oh, no. We're supposed to be at LaGuardia Airport. We have to turn around. And the driver says, you said JFK. I said, I know, but we got to turn around. We might be able to make this flight. So he turns around. He's driving under the speed limit. I said, you're going too slow. That's the present. He said, you said JFK. That's the past. And we said, we got to get to LaGuardia. That's the future. 
So we kept bouncing back and forth between the past, the present, and the future. You're going too slow. That's the present. You said JFK. That's the past. We got to get to LaGuardia. That's the future. So we kept going back and forth, past, present, future, past, present, future. And then every now and then, Ricky and I would stop and take a deep breath. All is well. <laughs> we step into the now. No issues. Everything is fine. We're in the nowness of this moment. So we got out of the car. <laughs> In the nowness of this moment, everything good. We go up to the counter with our bags, and the guy says to us, you're at the wrong terminal. <laughs> we said, what are you talking about? It says United Air. He says, yes, but operated by US Airlines. That's another terminal. We said, can we walk to it? He said, no, you got to take a cab. We get in the cab, get to the next terminal. We check in, we go through security, we get to the gate, and the flight was postponed an hour. So we walked around and we shook everybody's hand, apologizing for stopping time. <laughs> We're so sorry we did this. <laughs> but, but here's the issue, here's the point. There are people who live in the past. Immature pride or shame. Or people who live in the future. Fear or ambition. You see, ambition, ambi, like a person that's ambidextrous. They're moving in two directions at the same time. They're moving in the direction of their dream, but they're afraid they're not going to get there. Ambitious. And the present. Present is the field of your imagination. And you can have embarrassment or you can have vanity. You can have a lot of things. But it can be an opening into the now. The now is totally different than the present. The present is your imagination. But the now is no time no space, all here now. All of the qualities, all of the gifts are right here and right now. And then you discover that everything is working together for your good. Now here's the caveat in this. Here's a little small print. That right now you've been oriented by the society in which you live and uh, somewhere along the line you might even think that uh, you are a consumer of some kind. And as I sometimes say, I just imagine uh, that word and let it amplify itself in your mind and you will begin to see that a consumer is, uh, you know, mm, I'm a consumer. I have come to this planet to consume and to get and to become big. Uh, you are not a consumer. You are a creator. You are here to co-create with the fundamental harmony of the universe and allow it to flow through you like never before. Three questions you want to ask yourself on a regular basis. You want to ask, how can I grow? What can I give? And what can I celebrate? Those are three questions you want to live with. Because you are an evolving, unique being. You want to ask every day, how can I grow? So at the end of that day, you're not the same person that got out of bed. You've had an insight. You've had a revelation. You've practiced something new. You've tried something new. So that you have become more yourself. How can I grow today? I don't want to be the same person 365 days from today. I want to evolve. I want to become more myself. I want to express myself better. How can I give? You ask that question, the universe fills your hands with more than you can handle. And it keeps on filling it because you have asked, how can I be a giver? How can I share? As I said earlier, all of nature is in celebration for simply being, simply being in existence. It's celebrating constantly. Human beings have a tendency to postpone their celebrations. They wait for an anniversary. They wait for a birthday. They wait for a raise. They wait for something, and then now it's time to celebrate. When you begin to ask that question, what can I celebrate? You're lifting your octave. And what happens is you keep bringing into your life experience. You keep creating. You keep manifesting more and more and more things to celebrate. How can I grow? How can I give? And what can I celebrate? These are heart sets and mindsets for you to discover that the answer is you 
to the question of more prosperity, more health, right relationships, abundance, expansion during times of contraction? The answer is you, not outside of you. The answer is you, not someone else. The answer is you. Today is the beginning of a new life. Say yes to it. Again.